Batman 89, Shadows. Based on the comic written by Sam Hamm, with art by Joe Quinones, Leonardo Ito, and Clayton Cowles. Adapted by Ben Wan. Gordon lay on the ground, motionless. He was dead. Two-Face put his hands over his head, realizing what he had done. You fool! The coin said to let him live! Shut up! It doesn't matter. Nothing matters! It matters to me. Two-Face turned to see Batman emerge from the shadows, having just arrived on the scene. Despite finding Gordon's body, he still tried one more attempt to reach his friend. Harvey, it's over now. I want to help you. You've helped me enough. Do you know what's in this briefcase? More power than I ever dreamed of having. Two-Face broke off in a run, but Batman caught him with a batarang. Two-Face squirmed on the ground before pulling a detonator out of his jacket pocket. Collapsed on Batman. As the dust settled, Two Face approached the body, seeing that part of the Dark Knight's cowl had been ripped off. You called us Harvey. Why so familiar? He turned Batman's face and gasped, <gasps> finding himself looking into the eyes of his friend, Bruce Wayne. Can't be. It can't be! He quickly pulled out his camera and took pictures before he heard the voices of Drake and Catwoman approaching. A, a body in the rubble. I, I think it's Gordon. Two-Face ran off as Drake and Catwoman found Batman's body, with Bruce's face exposed. We gotta get him to- No hospitals. We'll take him home. To Alfred. You know who he is? Of course I do. And I know who you are, Drake. The next morning in Wayne Manor, Bruce woke up to find Catwoman in his room. She had reclaimed Miss Kitty, who was sitting on her lap. Oh, Selena. Three cracked ribs, dislocated ankle, a few bad sprains. You'll be out of action for a while. What's in the briefcase? Oh, back to work already? Harvey had it on him. You want it. What's in it? Well... You remember that heist you broke up? That Lincoln Savings and Loan robbery was executed by Lincoln Savings and Loan. See, they had paperwork that had to vanish in a hurry. For years they've been laundering money for the mob and kicking it back to the politicians, leaving pennies for improving the city. Then, you came along and boom! The incriminating documents are sitting in the police evidence room. As long as Harvey has that briefcase, he owns one governor, one senator, one mayor, and one brand new police commissioner. Oh, and I left one out. Harvey saw your face in the tunnel. He owns Bruce Wayne. Over at City Hall, Two-Face held court with the mayor and the city council. We're more than willing to listen, Harvey. Just tell us what you want. It's a short list. Outstanding charges against me dropped. Ongoing investigations cancelled. Harvey, that's going to be difficult. But you're going to do it anyway. Because from now on, I own you bloodsuckers, and you'll do everything I say. Calm down. If you want money, we'll cut you in. Sorry, boys. From now on, Gotham's money goes to Gotham. The gravy train stops here, and I know what you're thinking, but I warn you right now, if anything happens to me, your paper trail goes public, and the voters and the feds find out where you've been getting your money. Back at Wayne Manor, Bruce called Barbara Gordon to give his condolences on the death of her father. Barbara, uh, I'm so sorry. He was very kind to me once. He was a good man. 
After he hung up, Catwoman came to help him walk through the hallway. If we get our hands on that briefcase, the two of us could run this city. Together. <laughs> Maybe you should hook up with Harvey. Not funny. I've been thinking about this for months. About us. Ab yeah. Me too. That's a laugh. A whole year went by. You didn't know whether I was alive or dead. I looked. I didn't find you. Then I realized, as long as I didn't know for sure, there was a 50-50 chance you were still alive. That's when I stopped looking and you came back. Selena, do you ever want to be normal? Bruce and Selena pondered their future. Could he retire with her? Let Drake do the fighting on the streets? As they pondered this, Two-Face visited his old home at the Royal Garage. Mr. Otis was waiting for him. You get that parcel I sent you? I did. Where'd you get a half a million dollars, Harvey? That money was stolen from the people. I just stole it back. There were snipers at the station you robbed. They fired on a crowd of people. People that were marching for you. It was... Necessary. I've got real power now. I can change this city. Make it better. For a while there, I thought you had started to care about all the folks you left behind. Look at me, Jerome. Can't you see what I've been through? My skin burns. It festers. It reeks. It hurts to talk. Hurts to smile. Hurts to breathe. Handsomest man in Burnside. The young girls used to swoon when you smiled at them. That face would have carried you anywhere. But you know the old joke about time. Sooner or later, you get the face you deserve. Now, excuse me, I have to make a phone call. Mr. Otis turned to call the rest of the Burnside Council. He was going to denounce Harvey to the rest of the neighborhood. Two-Face knew he couldn't let that happen. He debated between both sides of himself. We can just walk away. We don't have to do this. Of course we do. Four people in my whole life. Four people have ever been kind to me. My mom, Jerome, Bruce, Barbara. We don't have to. Of course we do. The coin landed. Then Two-Face took aim at the man who raised him. Moments later, Drake Winston arrived at the garage. Hey, Mr. Otis. You in here? You said I had a package. Hello? But as Drake stepped in, he was horrified to find that Mr. Otis was dead. Oh no! Oh no! He then saw Two-Face bent over the body, head in his hands. Open your package. Hundred grand to Junior Batman for saving my life. Aren't you sorry you did? Mr. Dent, when I get through with you, the ugly side's gonna be the pretty side. Two-Face ran out into the street, calling on the people of Burnside. Help! Somebody help me! He shot Jerome Otis! Drake attacked him, but a crowd gathered, grabbing him and tearing him off Harvey. In the garage, they found Mr. Otis's body and the cash. They took Drake to the police, believing he was the one who robbed and killed his mentor. Back at the Batcave, Bruce Wayne now sat in a wheelchair as he listened to the news about Drake's arrest. Alfred walked in to deliver more bad news. Mr. Dent just called requesting an audience. He said he would be here in 20 minutes. I'll be ready. And Alfred, don't interfere. We've got to play this one just right.
True to his word, Two-Face arrived. Alfred brought him down to the Batcave, where he confronted Bruce by the Batmobile and the giant Lincoln's head penny. Nice coin. How about I see yours? The one that changes destiny. Why not? Since you work for me now. Two-Face flipped the coin to Bruce, who caught it. Harvey then held out the picture he took of Bruce in the tunnel. The cops see this if I happen to predecease you for any reason. Are you feeling a little more cooperative? You don't have to kill me if you can, Harvey. Right now is the best chance you'll ever get. If you insist. But, wait. Here's the other side of the coin. We could fix your face. Get you healthy. Meanwhile, I'm off rounding up the bad guys. A few months in therapy to straighten out, and you come home a hero. By then, I've retired. Every dime I have is at your disposal. Together, we clean up the city. The right way. No. I've gone too far. I can't turn back. Let the coin decide. Bruce flipped the coin back to Two-Face, who caught it. Two-Face took a moment, then flipped the coin. But high above, Catwoman had been watching. She used her claws to slice the ropes holding up the giant penny, sending it rolling over to Harvey. Harvey! Two-Face fell back over the edge, but caught himself on a ledge below. Bruce did his best to run over on his injured legs, throwing a rope to Harvey. Hang on! It's okay, Bruce. I can see it like it's lit up before me. The path to the future. Every choice we have to make. And it's beautiful. We're old men, Bruce. We're friends. And we made a difference. The people's lives are better. Happier. And Barbara, she forgives me. The two Gothams, they're one now. It was all worth it. They don't need us anymore. We can... We can finally... Let go. A whip cracked in the air. Cutting the rope. Sending Two-Face falling into the abyss. Shocked, Bruce turned to see Catwoman wrapping up her whip. How, how could you do that? I think you mean to say thank you. He would have killed you if the coin had- No, Selena, I rigged the game. I palmed his coin, gave him back a fake. Two heads, both clean. I win the toss either way. There was no reason for him to die. Oh, you and your messiah complex. He was broken, Bruce. Too far gone for you to save. I thought I could save him. I thought I could save you. You thought what? Last Christmas, I was wrong. We're not the same, Selena. I hoped we were, but we're not. I'm not a killer. Not a killer? Please. I heard what you did to the Joker. The Red Triangle Circus? Penguin? Maybe I was, but not anymore. I can't be. If there's anything I've learned from you, it's that. Here I was chasing those stolen documents for months, but silly me. I thought saving your life was more important. Maybe I should have hooked up with Harvey. Goodbye forever, Bruce. Oh, and Miss Kyle wants her cat back. You can keep the collar. As Catwoman left with Miss Kitty, Bruce looked at the red collar she left behind. Inside was a small microphone. Catwoman had been spying on him the entire time. Bruce stayed in the Batcave that night, in mourning over his former friend and the future he thought he had with Selina. That week, Harvey Dent's death hit the news. Barbara Gordon was in mourning at her apartment until a package arrived. When she opened it, her mouth dropped open in shock. Inside were photos from Harvey revealing that Bruce Wayne was Batman. While she wondered what to do, Selina Kyle drafted a letter to Barbara. That explosive evidence from your late fiancé was illegally acquired. It may be tainted, inadmissible in court, 
but I have access to certain private communications that might help you find the hard evidence you need to close out the case Mr. Dent was working on. That case will incriminate Gotham City's power elite. You should decide straight away whether you are willing to make such powerful enemies. If you are, I'll be delighted to help you. I hope you will think of me as your friend, your guide, and if I may be so bold, your oracle. Soon, Bruce recovered from his injuries and went down into the rocks in the Batcave. He wasn't able to find Two-Face's body, but he did find his gun. After giving it to the GCPD, they matched it to the one that killed Mr. Otis and set Drake free. Bruce had Alfred pick Drake up from jail and brought him over to Wayne Manor, where he led him into his garage. Here, you'll need the keys. Two clicks. As Drake clicked on the keys, the bat cycle appeared, uncloaking itself. Nice. Anything else I can give you? The little girl, Nasha Burroughs? We're setting her up with a $10 million trust fund. That's just it, Mr. Wayne? She's got nobody. All of that money, she'll have relatives, friends, neighbors coming out of the woodwork. They'll look at her and see a dollar sign. He must know what that's like. What do you propose I do? My sister lives upstate. Married. Husband has a good job, but they can't have kids. They've adopted too. If my sister could adopt that little girl, she'll grow up loved, wanted, have a normal life. And if he still wanted to give her that money, in 20 years or... Leave it to her in your will. Well, if you help me with this, I swear, I'll never tell her why you really did it. Bruce considered. He fantasized about a world in which things had gone differently. Maybe he and Selena could have been together. Maybe they'd have adopted children, taken Naisha in themselves. Maybe his parents would have still been alive. Maybe... Mr. Wayne? I'll see that Naisha gets the family she needs. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. Mm. Bruce. They shook hands. Drake then donned his costume, preparing to take the Bat Cycle home. By the way, Drake, what am I calling you these days? Well, you're a Bat guy. I'm a Bird guy. What do you think? He nodded towards the R insignia on his chest, then winked. And with that, Drake, or as he'd be known from then on, Robin, took off into the night with his new cycle. And will you be going out, sir? When you ask, I haven't decided. Bruce pulled out Harvey's coin from his pocket. Which side of him would he be honoring tonight? Bruce Wayne the Philanthropist, or Batman the Vigilante? Bruce flipped the coin to find out. This audio drama is brought to you by Newverse Creative and features the voice talents of Josh Portillo, Derek Willingham, Angela Heffler, Alexander Pond, Lauren King, Christopher Anderson II, Anthony Williams, and Harrison Toomey. Narrated by Ben Wan. This audio drama is based on a comic book written by Sam Hamm and was adapted by Ben Wan, directed and edited by Tim Maxwell. If you're a fan of this comic, check out my podcast, Superhero Stuff You Should Know, where I dove into each issue and interviewed writer Sam Hamm, artist Joe Quinones, and editor Andy Curry. And if you're a fan of how I adapted this comic for Newverse Creative, check out my short story titled Shortcut to Happily Ever After at Metaphorosis Magazine. You can find the link along with a bunch of my other work at my website, benwanwriter.com. Batman 89, Shadows. Batman was created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger, based on characters appearing in DC Comics.